off of the ground. Bitches love the ground. Oh, wait, shit. Roxanne, Roxanne, all she wanna do is party all night. Goddamn, Roxanne, never gonna love me, but it's alright. She think I'm an asshole, she think I'm a player. She keep running back though, only cause I pay her. For some quick background about Pierre Manzoni, he was never really involved in politics. He does hate fascism though, but he doesn't necessarily provide a political background or idea to interpret his artwork. He didn't believe in God, but he wasn't anti-clerical, so he didn't have a problem with religious speculation or interpretations. Instead, his views were more focused on philosophy and existentialism, which really fueled his artwork. Piero Manzoni surrounded himself with other like-minded artists. They sought to go against the current popularization of art and base their work on a satire of elitist views. His methods were seen as controversial, but it did get him a lot of attention. He was able to exhibit his artwork with other influential artists in the Milanese art scene, such as Lucio Fontana, and Enrico Baj at the La Avangardia exhibit. His views and challenges to the current perception of art made him a staple artist in the Dadaist movement. Oh, hello. Let me teach you something about Piero Manzoni's influences. So the Cold War definitely left Europe in this very tension-filled era of not knowing whether you should go out and buy whatever the hell you want or if you should be scared about a nuke falling on your hometown. Two distinct styles of abstract painting reflected these tensions. The first was art informel, which definitely recognized the anguished egos of the European people at the time, which was contrasted by the second, geometrical abstraction, which focused completely on utopia. And you got a bunch of artists that are like, hell nah, I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> Those crazy bastards. Lucio Fontana, a senior artist of high acclaim, is slashing paintings with knives. Alberto Burri is using a blowtorch to paint. Ooh. Ooh. What? Oh, yeah. So this guy, Piero Manzoni or whatever, he did a lot of really questionable things. He put his thumbprint on hard-boiled eggs right before eating them. Just like that. Mm -hmm. Like that. He also blew on a red balloon, attached a string to it, and put it on a wooden base. And he called it art, or he called it artist breath. And it was art. His breath was art. Not only that, he would sign his name on people and declare them a work of art. Just by having his name on them. Mm-hmm. So, after all those strange and unique artworks, Piero Manzoni created his famous piece, Artist Shit, in May 1961 in Milan, Italy. He produced 90 cans and labeled them 001 through 090, and you can see the number on the top of the can right there. There are exactly 30 grams of the artist's feces in each can. Manzoni matched the price of his feces to the price of gold in grams. The feces was dried naturally and was canned with no added preservatives. The label on the can has weight, date, contents, and assurance of natural preservation. It is okay that in 1965 a man named Piero Manzoni, in an unholy act of hubris, decided to criticize the newly consumerist Italian society by shitting in a can thus creating you. Despite no assurance of what was actually in the can, you were somehow valued and sold for your weight in gold, making you absolutely worthless and incredibly valuable at the same time. You are only valuable because you are ironic. You are only you because you are ironic. You only exist ironically. 